Katrina Sawa here at the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com and my co-host Alicia White with um, so many different websites. Why don't you, <laughs> well, let me, I'll have you introduce yourself in just a minute, Alicia, and tell them more about what you do. So we're on my business uh, group page today, uh, Jumpstart Your Marketing and Business Now. So hopefully you're seeing this, those of you in the group. Uh, we didn't get a lot of pre-marketing planned for this, so you'll have to catch it in the replay if you missed it. But we're talking all about uh, today branding and exposure strategies for your exhibitor back of the room setup. And so Alicia's an expert in helping you create the graphics and, and branding that goes in that back of the room. I am an expert in creating the strategy as well for lead generation. And so together, we thought we could help a lot of you who do those table displays, uh, whether it's a small 20-person event or a huge conference and you have a huge booth space. Um, we just, uh, we've done booths together before and we have a lot of experience. And so we're gonna share a few key things that we know you don't wanna forget. And so um, you know a little bit about me, hopefully. I love to help you make more money doing what you love. Um, and jumpstartyourmarketing.com is my website. Let me have Alicia tell you a little bit what she does, and then we're gonna dive right in. And if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments, and we will try to get to them. It is hard to see uh, the comments at the same time, live time, but I'm gonna do my very best to do that. And then, um, but Alicia, take it away. Thanks, Katrina. Hey, y'all. I'm Alicia White with Back of the Room Productions and Speakersheets.com. And I build speakers. Business owners, coaches, consultants, advisors, entrepreneurs who want to use speaking to grow their business need to be successful at it in order to grow their business. So I help these people become successful speakers. I give them strategies, tools, and ideas to really look like the expert that they are. And that comes with branding, uh, design, and then the strategy, the keys of you know how to use this tool, this speaker tool, or this, this other speaker tool or resource. I, I lay it all out for you. And people are loving the book that I just recently uh, published and it was endorsed by Tom Ziegler of Ziegler Inc. and uh, the proud son of Zig Ziegler. And he endorsed the book called The Successful Speaker's Handbook. And you can find that on Amazon. Great. You don't have it to hold up. <laughs> yeah, <I bet> you. <laughs> okay, <good>. Yay. <laughs> and so, uh, number one, obviously, it's good to have a book, especially if you have it in the back of the room when you're a speaker. And this is great for you, if, even if you're not speaking, but you're doing exhibitor booths. So even if you're a network marketer and you do exhibitor booths, pay attention, people, because uh, there's a lot of tips. And I go to a lot of trade shows and events, and so does Alicia. And we see people like not even collecting database information <laughs> on the back of the table, right? It's like, oh my God, you're just here to sell your jewelry or whatnot. But then there's a, dozens of people walking by and you're not capturing them for later marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So what's one of the biggest mistakes you see, Alicia, besides not doing that, besides not collecting and doing a drawing? What's one of the biggest mistakes you think? So I think one of the biggest mistakes that you have at the back of the room is not asking for that table at the back of the room. So if you are an exhibitor, then you already know that you're going to be uh, setting up a display, setting up your products, setting up some kind of imaging of your services. And really, and but if you're a speaker or a coach, you need to be setting up a table. Also, yeah. you need the display signs. I think the people who want to, you know, want to grow their business that sell services, they miss out on that opportunity. Um, I've seen people do that all the time. And I think one of the biggest things to have at the back of the room, other than the order form or the raffle drawing uh, strategy, is a big banner. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. I would have had, and so... When you're, like, let's take speakers, for example. Even if you're going to speak at a room of 10 people to 2,000 people, 
always trying to negotiate a table in the back of the room or somewhere in the room, even if it's just immediately following your talk and then, you know, so people can come to you on the break or something and then, you you know, you can't have one the whole time. There's always room to negotiate. So write down the word negotiate. Put it in the comments if you're like ding, 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 you know, negotiate. You got to negotiate that. You got to negotiate maybe um, ad or links or logos uh, on the website promoting you. So like if they're if they do your picture in your bio, um, make sure the back of the room is also the online back of the room. So don't forget that online back of the room. And um, one of the things I think is one of the big mistakes people make when they're doing exhibitor tables is not having a follow-up plan in place before you even start your, your table, before you even do the event, right? Don't you agree, Alicia? I agree. And one of the things that you taught me as my business coach for over the last four or five years is that having that follow-up system is key. It is so crucial. Yes, you can get on stage to speak. Yes, you can be an exhibitor at an event. But once you collect those cards, you don't want those cards to sit on that desk in a pile. Right. You need to get uh, have a system in place, whether it's a free email software right now until you can you know, make an investment into a soft uh, email software program that uh, has more oomph and more uh, engagement opportunities, you'll want to have some kind of email campaign already set up before you even go to the event. Hey, I met you at such and such event and it was nice to meet you. You asked for more information, here it is. Yes, and so the follow-up plan, so let's, let's back up a little bit. There's stuff to do before the event, there's stuff to do during the event, and there's stuff to do after the event when you're doing an exhibitor booth, whether you're speaking or just exhibiting, okay? And before the event is when to plan the follow-up. You wanna plan, especially when you're creating your um, offer of what you're gonna do for your drawing, right? So I was just an exhibitor at the eWomen Network Conference with a thousand women in Dallas, right? And you did that with me like a couple of years ago, and but you were in it this time. But, uh, but the thing, uh, that we did was we there was four of us that shared the booth it was a bigger booth space and we actually donated a bunch of our products programs and services and coaching sessions so the actual value of all of it together was over eleven thousand dollars right so we planned ahead to create a wow drawing so that we could stand out from the rest of the vendors and i've talked with a lot of the vendors and they said oh their ven their tables were slow like they didn't get a lot of things but guess what people wanted to go enter into the eleven thousand dollar drawing yes they did so Planning ahead with a gimmick, a wow factor, a shock and awe, something that you can do, number one. But we had graphics created, so then we had a banner created just for that drawing. We had an online uh, Facebook page, a group to put people from online sources. So we cultivated leads online as well. Okay, I had a landing page on the website that was all uh, where you could sign up online. You didn't have to go in person. So before ahead, before you do the show, think of things you can uh, that can make you stand out before. What are some of the other things that you would say in the before that they need to think about, Alicia? Well, you know, I'm looking at the book I wrote, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I talk a lot about having uh, handouts available uh, for. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what you know your handout can be a six page brochure or it can be a four by four card that has you know the eye-catching title the one that inspires them to want to talk to you so what is an eye-catching title can I talk about that for a second because I know that you've got one uh, got some ideas on get having an attention getting title uh, it, it's one that I, I talk about how um, you find out what, what is your target audience's problem and then what is the solution you provide and you add in some adjectives. So it's kind of like an equation, you know, problem plus solution equals the result. So that's kind of how I look at uh, 
doing that, but you have that on your message cards or your brochure or whatever, some kind of handout. You want to give something to them that they can look at later, not just your right. business card, because again, these go in the trash after I enter, enter them into my database. So there's, yeah, so I would, say, I would say that you could create a flyer around your program, product, or service, or event, mm -hmm. and that will have information about that specific event. Again, if they're not interested, they're not taking that, right? You could have a postcard. I do some postcards about events. I also have a plain postcard that talks about, you know, general, are you getting response? And that just leads them to um, a free call with me. And I have those on my table. Now, these aren't very well graphically designed. Trust me, you need Alicia to help you. But um, <laughs> I know. I do them sometimes quick and easy, right? But people yeah. take them. And, uh, but then there's what I call a tip sheet. And a tip sheet is different. It's not a flyer about your services necessarily. It's something of value. So it could be an article about a topic that you teach. It could be um, like like I have a tip sheet that gives you seven revenue generating activities that you can do every day for under 20 minutes. And so it gives you those little tips on things you can do to go get leads and clients every day. And then at the bottom of the sheet, it actually does talk about one of my little two hour masterclass uh, monthly coaching sessions for 79 bucks, right? And it has the link to go buy that if they want to, right? But it has good value on the majority of the front page. On the back page, it always use the back, right? You utilize the back of your flyers and your pages. It has a little bio of me and has like four different testimonials. So it's a tip sheet that people will want to keep. So something that they really, really want to keep, that they want to keep on hand to remind them to do something. Now, so whatever business you have, that might be something you know different than my revenue generating tips, but what could it be? Like, so really brainstorm on what that could be and then put a little bit of salesy around it, not a lot, and not something too expensive, something really easy um, and cheap. So that's another thing you could create on your table. Um, you're gonna want order forms, right? There's so many different ways to make order forms. I don't know if you have a sample there. I have one that I did at the conference. It was like a $197 offer, something really inexpensive, remember? Initially, to try you out is really important. So I put everything in the kitchen sink on there. I mean, they get a call with me, one of my events. They get um, a two-hour masterclass coaching session. They get two, both of my books. They get another video training, all for 200 bucks, and it's like a $2,400 value. Uh, and then there are a couple ways to make just um, so you can just say check here if you just want my free stuff, or check here if you just want to buy the book, or whatever. Um, but have an order form, and it doesn't have to be uh, the two-part NCR. That's what this is, where you take one and they take the other. It can be. But if you aren't sure what your offers are, they're gonna change often, I recommend just a single sheet and you can always then print more and not print too many so you don't waste the printing. Other ideas for order forms and things like that or other things that they need on their table? Well, I like to print my order forms uh, just at the local print shop. And I actually have them I'll, at the top, I will use that as a piece that they can fill out to let me know if they want a free consultation with me, if they want to be added to my email newsletter. And then the bottom half has the, the, the uh, package or program that I'm offering for that particular event. So I only print a few each time because my, it, depend, it depends on where I'm going to be, right? Yeah. And who I'm serving. And then I just have them cut along the um uh along the white space and now i have an eight and a half by 11 that was you know that are now that's now you know one third is a leave behind for me uh to enter, enter them into my database and the other half uh the other two thirds is the order form but one thing you taught me a long time ago was to always have an order form and uh, because you never know no matter where you go where you're networking because one of the things I learned, if you're just starting out, and it doesn't matter what you're selling, it can be a product through a networking uh, marketing uh, company, or it can be uh, a service that you offer, but do you know what you have? You have time and knowledge, and you can offer that 
as a free consultation, a paid consultation. And so you have an order form and yeah. that you put on there. <laughs> you can always sell yourself. <laughs> you can always sell an hour of yourself or a 50 minute call or a 30 minute call or whatnot. Yeah. And you can always give one away in your drawing too. So you gotta be thinking about what you're gonna do in your drawing. You don't necessarily have to go buy a gift, bas a gift basket or a gift card and give that away. Think of what you can offer. Um, what I, an idea I gave to my realtor client earlier today, in fact, she was here and she's doing a trade show in September. And I said, well, why, because you're a realtor and you want to help the community and you're in the chamber, go around to some chamber members and ask them to donate a little bit of something from their business, whether it's a gift card or, uh, and then a menu to their restaurant or maybe, um, a, a candle from their shop with their business card or whatever, and put a big, you know, logo gift basket together that you would give away, then you didn't pay for all that stuff. They're getting exposure and there's a winner. You know, it's a win, win, win all the way around if you can do something like that. I've done that before when I was really in the local area. Um, but another thing I wanted to talk about is the drawing slips. When you do drawings, don't just take business cards because most people's business cards only have their name, email, and their phone number. Sometimes it has their website, and um, sometimes their email is just a Gmail, and it doesn't have a website, so you have no idea what their website is, so you can't go get more information um, if their phone number or their um, email doesn't work, right? And these days, you really, really, really need to be doing something in the mail as well, and you also need their phone number. So I recommend, and it's also helpful to have more of a drawing slip. So we ask for full contact information, Plus we, um, and the bottom, right, you have some too. In the bottom, I always ask, like, what are you interested in learning about? Yeah. So I have things like marketing and sales training, become an author, website designer update, speaker event, or speaker training, social media, video. So when they click, <coughs> so I know when I'm following up with them, the things that they really want to know more about that I can focus in on when I do that follow-up call. And so doing a drawing slip like this gives you more detailed information that you can use in the follow-up. What is yours to have on it? So mine has, uh, would you like to get speaker tips? Mm -hmm. Visual branding consistent. Mm -hmm. Do your products reflect your value? And want to schedule a quick call with me? So, so that's more of a little quiz, like a, like you a know. No <laughs> option there. Right, little check boxes. So, However you do it, just make sure you're collecting full contact information. And, you know, like when we did that $11,000 prize drawing a couple weeks ago, we required full contact information. If you're going to win that, if you're going to be one of the five winners, we required your full contact information to qualify. Otherwise, you're not going to qualify. You're still going to get the free stuff that you get for entering, but, but you got to give it up. So when you're in person with people, you can require more contact information than say on a web page where you just want to ask for name and email. So yeah. that's kind of the before. Oh, and the then the big signs, right? So what kind of banners do you need? I just want to recap oh. that. So we have two forms right now, guys. Right. You have your drawing or raffle form that you want everyone to fill out. You stand uh, or you tell everyone that you see fill out this form, put it in the box because some, everyone can get this X free gift. I do that a lot. I give away a digital download right? and uh, Katrina gives away an audio CD with uh, a, a P PDF that comes in the email, but uh, everybody is available to, you know, get this, this, uh, this digital download, or if it's for a drawing for a consultation, you so have that. Right. The other form you have is the order form that she talked about that we talked about. And and then you and then you have your follow up system set up before you even go to the event. So yeah, kind of a recap. Yeah. Thank you. And then we didn't talk really about the signage. You said banner, but yeah. there's a few different types of signs. So depend if you're really on a budget and you're brand new. You know, you can get a 11 by 17 uh, little banner that sits on the tabletop. Yeah. And you could you could get it designed, which might only be a couple hundred bucks, maybe less. Um, but printing, I just printed a couple of those at FedEx for 20 bucks. Okay. And it comes with a little stand and everything. Now, granted, 
I'm not a fan of the stands that they sell for 20 bucks, but for 20 bucks, you know, you can get started and have a table, a professional tabletop sign on your table. The next, and she probably has one, and the next step up would be one that, like a retractable sign. Those are much more better, much more better, much better, trust me. Much They're better. so much more professional and easier. And so show the bottom of it, the stand, like they can see the stand. So it's a retractable up and down, yeah. And it's just like you see those floor banner signs, but they actually make tabletop ones. That's where I would start, honestly. Yes. And especially if you're not in a huge conference room. If you're in a huge conference room now or a huge uh, room, you want a floor banner. And sometimes I even put my floor banner on top of my table. So it actually, was, you can see it from across the room in big bold print. So. Those are the kinds of signs. Um, there's also the plexi, not plexiglass, but the cork board um, signs. I have one made that I made for my book, but it's very awkward to use. It doesn't fold, right? So there's that. This, this is a foam core oh, yeah. board, and it's uh, 11 by 17. No, it's, I can't remember, 12 by 18. Huh? 11 by 21 or something like that. Yeah. Maybe 17 by 21. Talk. Anyway, and, but the list, this is hard to move around, but right. this is probably one of your least expensive options. Okay. Okay. Costs because you can go to, to any you know office printing supply store that has a copy. Right. Yeah, and sometimes they do the graphics too. Now Alicia's an amazing graphic um, person to do these for you, but if you're on a budget, you know, you can make do it's just at some point you're going to want to upgrade right the yeah. graphics now with that you're going to need a little easel to stand it on right so you have to buy an easel but um so that's those are all the things that i can think of um before well, now I, I just yeah. want to mention real quickly one of the reasons why you want the signage is not just to call their attention to what you're offering and what your value is they're People, this is where the branding strategy comes in. There's a lot of psychology in how people perceive you as an expert. And if you're one of the people who has the large floor banner, a couple of signs, you know, and you have your product displayed nicely, you will be favored over someone who does not. I've seen it happen time and time again where coaches who share very similar information and you go to the back of the room or you visit them at their vendor table and the one with the beautiful display or a professional looking display is the one that has more uh, right. prospects right more traffic mm -hmm. and i've been posting some notes in the in the chat underneath us too while i'm in so i look kind of funny because i'm like Whoa, over there but that's what i've been doing <laughs> so hopefully you guys are answering the comments and stuff. Um, so, you know, we could go on and on and on for probably an hour and a half, all that, everything else you need to do. The gist of it from here, and there's so much more to know for during and after. What I really want you to, to take away when you're when you're at the show is you cannot, I mean, we get rid of the, the chairs. You don't sit behind your table. You push the table back and you stand in front of it and you walk out into the crowd and pull people into your booth. You cannot sit there, do not eat at your booth, do not look silly like that. Please walk away and go eat and have someone else help man, you, man the table if you need to. Um, but you have to pull people into your booth. You have to say, hey, do you want to enter the $11,000 drawing? Hey, do you want to win a free whatever, right? Come on in, sign up, right? And the draw sometimes might be the sign up. I know you want to sell your stuff. But get them on the list so you can continue to market to them later. Because what else are you there for? You're there to get leads. Yes, if you sell some stuff, fantastic. But if you don't get the leads, you can't market to them later. And then it's, it's you know, you have residual opportunity to continue marketing. What would you say about, like, during the show, Alicia? Well, during the show, it's really, really hard, hard, hard to sit behind the table. Uh, because how are you going to meet people if you're not in front of the table pulling them in? I also would suggest to uh, talk to, you know, when you see a group of, of people at a table and they're just sitting there, ask them, hey, did have you come back here yet? Have you, you know, engage them. Yeah. I know yeah. that may be out of some people's comfort zone, but 
in order to do this, just be yourself, be authentic. People will come to you. Yeah. Be authentic, but be a little bit more aggressive than maybe you might normally be. Not annoying. No. You're not going to be annoying, if, especially if you're an introvert. You just asking someone is not annoying because you're probably not going to be able to be annoying if you're an introvert. So don't worry about that. It's those uh, annoying extroverts that are going to be really annoying. Okay. So yeah. I'm an extrovert, but I don't think I'm an annoying. But I do go up to tables of people and say, hey, did you guys know uh, that we were giving away a blankety blank? Did you do that yet? No. Here's some, here's some slips. Why don't you fill it out and I'll go enter for you. Don't make them get up and go there. Give them the slip right there and they can fill it out right there and make it easy for people right so and, yeah and make it easy on them have a bunch of pins sitting there i mean you may only want to put two or three out at a time but they walk away so always have those yeah. pins ready. there's i have a whole like toolkit thing that i bring for exhibit it shows i mean i have um those little you know when you have a pipe and drape kind of thing i have those little hooky things that hold uh signs up with grommets and I have extra ones of those little hooky things just because you never know. And I needed them in Dallas because we had a banner with six grommets in it and they only gave you two hookies. So I had extra. So, you know, you got to have stuff. And sometimes I have rope or fishing wire oh. so I can also tie things down and um, tape. I, yeah. Tape. Uh, Sharpie. Permanent um, markers. Colored paper. paper. Because yeah. what if you forget your drawing sign? You could take a piece of colored paper, fold it over, and sharpie out a sign and stick it on on your table. And that's not bad. I mean, do it. You're you're or, spending money, spending time. Or you just may not know what your uh, offer is, and your business coach comes up to you and writes it out for you and sticks it I, on the table. I, I, I do do that. I do that with strangers though too. I'll go to trade shows and like, oh honey. You have such beautiful stuff. How come you're not doing a drawing of some sort? Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, let me just help you. And then I grab a wine glass from the bar. I'll grab a piece of paper. And, and I usually have a Sharpie. So I pull out my Sharpie. And I say, what can you give for free? And da, 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 da. And, okay. And I'll make a big sign uh, with big, bold letters in a red Sharpie, even if their table is purple. Okay. So, again, you got to stand out. Um, so those are some things that you can do during, but don't just sit there. You can't, if you're going to really work it, you got to work it. And then from stage, if you're speaking, um, have a reason for people to go to your table, have them make sure they have to go and fill out the drawing. I know some people are tempted these days with text message, text this word to blankety blank. But if you're not going to follow up with more text stuff and email, you're not getting full contact information that way, by the way, you know, and you can get a lot more information in the back of the room. So I don't know. I don't, I don't agree. I don't do the text message stuff because first of all, not everybody does it <coughs> and people are tired of, I think that strategy. So <coughs> you just have to figure out what's going to be really juicy in the back of the room. Um, I want to talk there's so much to talk about follow-up. I'm just going to give out a free resource, <clears throat> but I can't talk right now. So fill in while I cough for a minute and then I'll give a free resource for follow-up information. <coughs> while she's um, doing that, I wanted you to know that um, branding is so important. And that's one of the things you want to make sure before you start creating <coughs> raffle forms, order forms, your posters, your banners, your business cards, your takeaways, you know, your little postcards or brochure. Make sure that it is consistent, that your colors, your style, your message is consistent from, from each piece because you only have a few seconds for someone to get that information in. And then when they see it, they go, they take your, your information home and they see it on the website. If it's the same, there will be a connection. Yeah. If it's not the same, there's a disconnect. And yeah. they're not going to be able to recall you, your product. And so keep that consistent. Your social media images, your website, consistent with your printed and digital materials. I, I do break the rules a little bit on that. But yes, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I'm sometimes a little wing it girl and I'm like, Oh, I just need to create something really quickly. Like, like the, if you're on the, this group page, the, the current um, profile picture, 
for the group right now is just an advertisement thing for my next live event, right? It doesn't look like my branding at all. Although it has my Jumpstart Your Biz logo and I have a bunch of different Jumpstart logos, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look like my brand. But listen to what Alicia says, because really it's true. If you could just get someone like her to just, and, and I should do that, but I think of things last minute sometimes. So don't be like me, um, be like her. And <laughs> I'm just being real, right? This is real. This is reality TV. Um, <laughs> all right, so I was gonna share a follow-up resource, and then if you have something to send people to for more information, you should definitely get her book for sure if you're speaking. Um, her book is awesome. You can get it on Amazon on your website too? Um, it will be soon, yes. I have a shopping cart now. Okay, all right, good. Um, but jumpstartyourfollowup.com, jumpstartyourfollowup.com is a place you can go for um, a free audio training where I talk about my whole follow-up system and what to send, when to send it, how often and how to from events and things like that. And then it also gives you my flow chart, which is a visual. It's a visual flow chart of what I'm talking about. So you'll get that for free if you want to go to jumpstartyourfollowup.com and grab that. And then, because it's so much to explain about the follow-up, there's more to it than just emailing and making one call. It's There's a lot to it. I talk about four types of follow-up and 28 touches, and you wanna get this. So I would recommend going there for that so you know what to do on the follow-up of these kinds of events, um, which is what I'm in the middle of now from the e-women thing. Mm -hmm. um, and what about you, Alicia? I know you can do all kinds of stuff for people in regards to helping them either redo their brand if they need brand, do a couple things as far as signage if they need signage, but also you do more strategy too. What's, um, oh, what okay. yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, one of the things that uh, I would love for you to do is even though it's a, um, a tool that's labeled, it's titled the seven tools you need, uh, that, uh, the seven tools speakers need to get more business, this is true about what you're putting on your um, on your uh, exhibit, if you're an exhibitor, uh, a vendor, so uh, you'll want this information also. So you can simply go to backoftheroomproductions.com, backoftheroomproductions.com, and I have a free offer there. You can sign up to get the free seven tools speakers need to get more business. Awesome, I was typing, I didn't want you to hear my clicky, clicky, click, click, click. <laughs> so let's see, I didn't catch that URL because I was writing mine, but you'll put it in the thing when we're done here. It's uh, my website, and, uh, okay, cool. but when you are really serious about getting to, you know, starting your branding, Give me a call. We, I love doing these branding branding consultation. I'm sorry, these branding development sessions that I do. They're 90 minutes. I work with a person on video, just like this. But I open up my screen and we start choosing colors and fonts and styles. And then you get this style guide that sh shares information about everything that we that you selected. And it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun, yes, but it is the foundation for every visual piece that you create, digital or printed. Awesome. And what's the free thing again? Uh, if you'll go to my uh, website, Back of the Room Productions, it's the seven tools. Oh, I guess I can type that in there. The seven tools okay, I've got it. speakers need to get more business. Seven tools. Speakers need to get more business. Yeah. All right. And then let's see. What's one? Um, <laughs> do you have an epic fail <laughs> story that um, I know I just kind of threw this out for you? I have one I could probably share. Epic fail for back of the room, just so people don't do this. Okay, this is what not to do, people. Um, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you mine. Well, yeah, tell me yours. <laughs> well, it wasn't even my fault. But when I went to a speaking gig one time in Knoxville, Tennessee, the the airline lost my luggage, right? 
And what's funny is I had my table display stuff, but I didn't have any clothes or toiletries or anything like that. <laughs> so the epic fail would be to um, have lost all your marketing materials, right? And then would have, and so I probably would have gone and just handwritten some stuff. You know, one time I did, one time is, um, you just kind of make do, right? And I've actually done business cards like this before. I had business cards on me, but I wanted to do a little promotion. So I took a blank piece of paper, like from the business center at a hotel, right? And I made little squares. And then I would have a, a big call to action. Um, I would handwrite it, obviously neater than that, right? But I would handwrite like, Meet me in my hotel room or, or a lunch, free breakfast at 7 a.m. on Thursday or whatever. And my phone number or something, text me if you want in or something like that. Some kind of last minute thought I had. And I literally would go handwrite 10 of them on a page and then go and make copies of it and pass those out. So um, if you don't think of something ahead of time, don't not do something. If you come up with a brilliant idea, I got 20 people to come to a breakfast one time because I passed out these stupid handwritten copy things, okay? And I got clients from it. So when you can think of really things on the spot, you do whatever it takes to get that lead or get that thing. And so that's just a weird, funny story. But, um, but the Knoxville thing, I actually did lose my luggage and I had to actually, I flew in at like 11 o'clock at night. Luckily, there was a 24-hour Walmart. And so I rented a car and I went to Walmart and I bought clothes, shoes, bras, panties, uh, makeup, uh, curling iron. Um, I mean, everything I needed to get ready for the next day. And it wasn't the best outfit, let me tell you, because, you know, it's Walmart. But um, anywho, that's a couple stories for you for fun. <laughs> Speaking stories. How about you? Well, actually, in Las Vegas, just a couple of weeks ago, I left all of my jewelry back home. Oh, so, and people would say, "Oh, but it's just jewelry." But ah, it, but it was part of my branding because it right. meant my stuff, right? Yeah. And so, but that was okay. It gave me an excuse to get some more jewelry. And uh, <laughs> oh, poor problem to have. I know, right? But uh, but as far as uh, a big fail, well, I will tell you in the beginning, guys. If you're not if you're not getting them to fill out something with their with their contact information on it, you're going to miss the boat. Especially asking them this question. I wish I had done that years earlier. It wasn't until much later that I learned that you're supposed to do that when you're at the back of the room. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, and another, th and we'd already touched on it. You can't s expect people to come to your table. You have to go and create the excitement. Of one of the things that I thought was a fail that turned to a success, I went to a workshop in Austin and there were supposed to be three speakers giving workshops at the same time. And that's okay, these are called breakout sessions. Except that two more speakers were added to the same time slot I was in. And I thought, well, you know, okay. yeah, we have 200 people here and now my chances of getting, you know, 50, 50, 50, you know, it, 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 I wanted more than just, you know, 20 people showing up here because one guy was a noteworthy keynote. Uh, I went out and started marketing myself to everybody and say, hey, have you thought about speaking to grow your business or mm. whatever? And there were uh, at least three that I remember seeing that said they were going to the other presentation but ended up at mine because I had that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah, and a lot of times those big name people, they won't do that marketing room work in the room thing. So when you can work the room uh, in addition to your booth, I mean, you have to work the room sometimes. So, and in order to get the people, I've done lots of breakout sessions. And when you're up against a couple other really cool topics or people, it's it's tough. It's like, okay, why, why, why should people come to mind? Maybe I'll give them out something or I'll give a freebie just for coming or whatever. So good ideas. Well, and I have one more uh, thing to mention. And, uh, is I created this huge floor banner and it's a good investment. You know, it's a pretty price, you know, it's not exorbitant, but it's, it costs to print these banners. Right. And I noticed right off the bat that I had a symbol for the website 
next to my phone number and the phone symbol next to my website. Okay. So yeah. I mixed the two. The yeah. Phone symbol should have been next to my phone number, not my website. And I said, well, there's nothing I can do about it now. Of course, you know, you're always in a hurry trying to get your printed materials before an yeah. event. So I went ahead and displayed it. No one said anything. I used that thing five times until a man, I mean, nothing wrong with men, but I guess he's just very observant. <laughs> a man walked up to me and said, hey, did you know? And I, Yes. Thank you. You're like, yes, I'm the designer. Thank you. And I miss <laughs> That's this is why it's good to get people to proof your stuff. When I have clients that, go and do those kinds of designs and are going to spend hundreds of dollars to get something printed. I'm like, please, please, please show me the proof before you go to print because inevitably I will miss, uh, they will miss finding uh, the lack of website or lack of phone number or lack of uh, com whatever. I mean, there'll be things missing and or the font size will be so damn small that nobody can read it. And I'll be like, Oh, are you sure this is regular size? I mean, you got to look. So yeah, but we should really wrap it up. We could sit here for hours and I know we can. Yeah. Um, and we've pretty much given away all our secrets to the back of the room. So hopefully that you're gonna use some of these things helpful um, people, but but come and get more because there is more. You can't just do what we said and not follow up. You can't just do what we said and then have crappy looking graphics or not the right wording or the message or so. There's some gaps here with what we're saying and not for a reason, it's just we don't have enough time. So. If we could work with you all individually somehow, we'd love to. And we'd love to help you make more money doing what you love, um, become more, more of a speaker or just more of a lead generating machine. So, yeah. I mean, grow your business. You know, it's, it's what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. What are you waiting for? Stop it. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. This is Katrina Sawa with Jumpstart Your Marketing and Alicia White with speakersheets.com. Uh, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Good Bye. Time. Bye.